Welcome to iHnani.com. Computer Fundamentals Introduction to Computers This is fourth video of Computer Fundamentals Part 1. In this video I will start with the generations of computers. For those who have not gone through the previous videos, I would suggest to complete them before going through this video, which will help you in understanding it better. Generations of Computers World War gave rise to numerous developments and started off the computer age. The development of computers went into a high-speed mode. From here onwards, the computer development is often referred to in reference to the different generations of computing devices. A generation refers to the state of improvement in the product development process. It is often used in relation to the hardware of computer. With each new generation, the circuitry has gotten smaller and more advanced than the previous generation before it. Each generation of computers is characterized by major technological development, that fundamentally change the way computers operate, resulting in increasingly smaller, cheaper and more powerful and more efficient and reliable devices. New discoveries are constantly being developed that affect the way we live, work and play. All the computers, that were developed or what we have been speaking about, till the advent of the devices that used electronic valves, are sometimes referred to as zero-generation computers. They were developed before the semiconductor revolution took place in 1946. They were made up of wooden or mechanical components. Examples, abacus, Napier's bones, differential engine etc. From, there on, we have five generations of computers each corresponding to different technology such as vacuum tubes, transistors, integrated circuits, Microprocessors, Artificial Intelligence First Generation, from 1940 to 1956 Technology, Vacuum Tubes The computers during the period 1945 to 1956, are regarded as the first generation computers. In first generation computers, the operating instructions or programs were specifically built for the task for which computer was manufactured. Each computer has a different binary coded program called a machine language that told it how to operate. This made the computer difficult to program and limited its versatility and speed. The first generation computers used vacuum tubes for circuitry, and magnetic drums for data storage. In the picture you can a vacuum tube. ENIAC used 17,468 vacuum tubes. You can imagine how it looks like. A vacuum tube was a fragile glass device that used filaments as a source of electrons and control and amplify electronic signals. It was one of the high-speed electronic switching devices available at that time. The vacuum tube computers could perform computations in milliseconds. They were huge in size and occupied large rooms. A magnetic drum, is a metal cylinder, coated with magnetic iron oxide material, on which, data and programs can be stored. The tracks on a magnetic drum, are, assigned to channels located around the circumference of the drum, forming adjacent circular bands that wind around the drum. A single drum, can have up to 200 tracks. As the drum rotates at a speed of up to 3000 rounds per minute, the devices read and write heads deposit magnetized spots on the drum during the write operation and sense these spots during a read operation. This action is similar to that of a magnetic tape or disk drive. This picture shows one of the panels holding vacuum tubes in a ENIAC computer, which had a total of 17,468 vacuum tubes. 
they were very expensive to operate and in addition to using a great deal of electricity, generated a lot of heat, which was often the cause of malfunctions. First generation computers relied on machine language to perform operations, and they could only solve one problem at a time. Machine languages are the only languages understood by computers. While easily understood by computers, machine languages are almost impossible for humans to use, because they consist entirely of numbers. Input was based on punch card and paper tapes, and output was displayed on printouts. The UNIAC and UNIVAC computers are examples of first-generation computing devices. While ENIAC was the world's first operational electronic digital computer, developed by Army Ordnance to compute World War II ballistic firing tables, the UNIVAC was the first commercial computer delivered to business clients. Second generation, from 1956 to 1963, technology, transistor. Transistors replaced vacuum tubes and ushered in the second generation computer. These transistors took place of the vacuum tubes used in the first generation computers. The transistor was at work in the computer by 1956. Coupled with early advances in magnetic core memory, transistors led to second generation computers that were smaller, faster, more reliable, and more energy efficient than their predecessors. In the picture, you can see a different types of transistors in various sizes. The thread-like needles attached to the transistors are used to hook it up to a circuit board. You can also see the comparison in size between a transistor and a vacuum tube. The transistor was invented in 1947, but did not see widespread use in computers until the late 1950s. Transistor is a device composed of semiconductor material, that amplifies a signal or opens or closes a circuit. Invented in 1947 at Bell Labs, transistors have become the key ingredient of all digital circuits, including computers. Today's latest microprocessor contains tens of millions of microscopic transistors. It's safe to say that without the invention of transistors, Computing as we know it today would not be possible. A transistor is far superior to a vacuum tube, which allowed computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, more energy efficient and more reliable than their first generation predecessors. Though transistors still generated a great deal of heat that subjected the computer to damage, it was a vast improvement over the vacuum tube. Second-generation computers still relied on punched cards for input and printouts for output. Second-generation computers moved from cryptic binary machine language to symbolic, or assembly, languages, which allowed programmers to specify instructions in words. It was the stored program, and programming language, that gave computers, the flexibility to finally be cost-effective and productive for business use. The stored program concept meant that, instructions to run a computer, for a specific function were held inside the computer's memory, and could quickly be replaced by a different set of instructions for a different function. A computer could print customer invoices, and minutes later, design products or calculate paychecks. More sophisticated high-level languages such as COBOL and FORTRAN came into common use during this time, and have expanded to the current day. These languages replaced cryptic binary machine code with words, sentences, and mathematical formulas, making it much easier to program a computer. New types of careers, such as programmer, analyst, and computer systems expert came into being and the entire software industry began with second-generation computers. The first large-scale machines to take advantage of this transistor technology were early supercomputers, Stretch by IBM and Lark by Sperry Rand. These computers, 
both developed for atomic energy laboratories, could handle an enormous amount of data, a capability much in demand by atomic scientists. The machines were costly, however, and tended to be too powerful for the business sector's computing needs, thereby limiting their attractiveness. Only two LARCs were ever installed, one in the Lawrence Radiation Labs in Livermore, California, for which the computer was named, Livermore Atomic Research Computer, and the other at the U.S. Navy Research and Development Center in Washington, D.C. Throughout the early 1960s, there were a number of commercially successful second-generation computers used in businesses, universities, and government from companies such as Burroughs, Control Data, Honeywell, IBM, Sperry Rand, and others. One important example was the IBM 1401, which was universally accepted throughout industry, and is considered by many to be the Model T of the computer industry. The picture here shows the IBM 1401. By 1965, most large business routinely processed financial information using second-generation computers. In the next video, of Computer Fundamentals Part 1, I will continue with the third generations of computers.